from my review of Top Gear Part 1, which is what I'm now calling it, I did go back like the comments have recommended and I have watched the rest of the episode. And I kind of wish I watched the rest of the episode the first time because while some of the events with the Land Rover and the Jeep were a little bit boring, I thought the whole thing with Matt LeBlanc giving the strongman abuse and then the strongman going, what? I mean, okay, I'm very sorry, it's entirely my fault. And just that kind of stuff, it's the Matt LeBlanc kind of humour. And I like that. That seems to be what brightened up the show for me when I watched it the first time. But there was a lot of very cool stuff there. Now, I can't remember everything off the top of my head, but I remember the things with Matt LeBlanc was absolutely brilliant with the Reliant towing up the hill and things like that. Chris Evans kind of demonstrated my whole theory um, again which was he is literally just trying to do the same as Clarkson. Um, so in that challenge they had to get up the hill and drive the military car from their country. So Matt LeBlanc obviously got the Jeep and he got the Stars and Stripes uh, Reliant. Chris Evans obviously got the Series 1 Land Rover with his Union Jack Reliant. And it was like Matt LeBlanc was doing it the honest way and he had the strong man using brute force to move logs and stones and whatever. Well, boulders actually. Stones is a bit of an understatement. But then Chris Evans decides to do the very Clarkson kind of approach of, well, only a bit of it has to get up the hill when they got stuck. So they tore the door off the Reliant and ditched the rest of it. And then because that wasn't funny enough, he thought it'd be funny for him and he's co-driver or whatever to then roll the thing over and it was like you've already crossed the line by cheating and trying to do a very Clarkson approach to that don't then go further it's like if you tell a joke that no one finds funny and then you try and explain it everyone just wants you to cut to the next scene or just shut the fuck up basically and then he took another Clarkson kind of approach and basically the rules never said anything about them not introducing anyone else they never said that if you introduced anyone else you're breaking the rules so I'll do the Clarkson approach and do that so somebody else just popped out over the hill, some triathlete or whatever. And I just felt that it wasn't funny. That should have been something LeBlanc did. If Chris Evans wanted to hit this with intelligence and that, he should have done it the straight up way and just done it intelligently. And Matt LeBlanc should have done the funny part of cheating and just, well, you've already gave me the shit car and you've given me the Jeep and you've weighed it down with this very, very heavy man. So I'm going to call on somebody else and I'm only going to use part of the Reliant or whatever. I feel that maybe Matt LeBlanc should have done the cheating bit, if any of them should have cheated in the challenge at all. Um, but overall I did find the challenges quite entertaining with Matt's parts. Now this is sounding like a bit of a fan video for Matt. I, I, I'm not a fan of him. Uh, I was not a fan of Friends either. I watched one series and I was sick of the theme tune whereas now I hear it and I get a headache. Um, but yeah, I wish I could remember more off the top of my head, but I thought maybe this would be a good idea just to post this video and give the review a bit of closure because a lot of people were saying you should have watched the rest of it. So, I have. Um, what was the other thing they did that I missed the first time? The review of The Nomad. Oh my word. Matt LeBlanc introducing the paparazzi was unbelievable. The guy's like a lizard with opposable thumbs and just things like that. Like, I can't do the impression uh, the impression of it and I can't make it anywhere near as funny as it was on show, but I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And while I feel the analogies were very Clarkson-ish, it was funny. He actually delivered them very well. I think if anyone should try and impersonate Clarkson's kind of analogies and that, it should be Matt LeBlanc. It shouldn't be Chris Evans. Chris Evans just needs to, like, fucking shut up and just let Matt LeBlanc do the work. Um... And it was like the slow motion scenes with the dust cloud and um, drifting near a cliff when you had the dirt bike jumping over the nomad and everything. It was just so fucking cool. Like, that is true Top Gear. That is the way Top Gear should be. It's the way it always has been and it seems that only one of the presenters seems to have kept that essence. Um, but I feel the review of the nomad, I could watch that over and over again. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. The drone when it goes into the big dust cloud and he gets blinded and then they just crash this hundred odd pound drone or a couple hundred pound drone into a cliff. Um, I thought that was brilliant and the guy on the dirt bike was excellent, although I did notice a few little errors with it. Like, he was supposed to be able to ride the bike with the camera, but if you look at a lot of the time he didn't actually have the camera with him when they were taking shots of him doing jumps and all that. Obviously there's reasons behind that, like, who else could jump a dirt bike while having a big massive DSLR with a telephoto lens on the end of it. Um, but I feel they could have maybe 
tried to cover that up some way, like he had a sling to hold it or something like that. There was a little bit of inconsistency in it, but I believe for a first episode, I think they actually did very well on that. Um, and I, I'm tempted to say it's probably the highlight of the show. Um, I'm not sure if anyone would agree with that. If you agree with that, leave it in the comments, hit that like button. Um, and if you disagree with it, then just say in the comments as well. If you want to hit the dislike button, you know, I, I, I want the honest opinion. I want to know what people think. Um, now I'm going to get hundreds of dislikes and no likes. Fuck, I've shot myself in the foot there. Um, yeah. So I just thought I'd do this video quickly. I don't even know if I'm in focus or anything like that. I feel like shit today. But yeah, I, th I thought a bit of closure for the Top Gear review would be a good idea. And I am planning to be back next week to do a review of episode 2 to see if they've improved on what the general uh, public are saying about the show, to see if they fixed any issues, see if they finally stuck a bit of fucking duct tape over Chris Evans um, or played music over every bit he tries to speak in or something like that because it's not just me and it's not just other YouTubers and it's not just the people comment and it's the newspapers as well, things like The Sun uh, and I believe the Daily Mail also posted something um, and I think maybe the Telegraph? I'm not entirely sure, I just kind of um, googled it quickly and just had a look at what websites were posting what and had a quick look at the headlines and things like that because um, I have been a busy boy behind closed doors but yeah, I'm planning on being back next week to do another ep uh, another review on the next episode um, and hopefully I can try and squeeze it all into one part because right now I have three videos to edit today um, one of them I haven't actually finished yet and I'm planning on possibly doing a video game um, a video game, like, yeah, video game, PewDiePie style kind of thing, you know um, screen capture kind of stuff um, I don't even know what to call it e-gaming? I don't know <laughs> don't know um, so yeah, I'm gonna sign off now because I'm rambling again and I seem to be making a habit of this and I really shouldn't also, the battery's going to die, and that's when you charge it. So, yeah, this has been Thomas Elder. This has been the part two review of Top Gear Season 23, Episode 1. See ya!